Now the Berians were of more noble character than the Thessalonians, for they received the message with great eagerness and examined the scriptures every day to see if what Paul said was true. Many of the Jews believed, as did also a number of prominent Greek women and many Greek men. Amen. My soul, restore our church. My soul, restore our church. My soul, restore our church. Holy God our Father, you are the master of life and we come before you. We ask that you would accept our spirits. You have given us your great grace and you desire to make us prosper by your great love. We pray that as we keep your word, we may have faith to accept your promises in this worship. We pray that you give us your spiritual blessings as we have good fellowship with you. We pray that all things belonging to us will prosper as we glorify you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray, Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. During this time, let us pray about how we could not live according to God's word during this past week. Let us rely on Him and in His grace. Let us pray together in repentance. Oh, 
주의 보혈만이 우리를 깨끗게 하며 우리의 모든 것을 정말 덮어주시며 주의 은혜만이 우리의 삶을 돌이키며 주께로 나아갈 수 있는 믿음을 얻는 우리의 심령이 될수 있사오니 우리 하나님 주께서 인도하여 주시옵소서 주의 생명의 말씀 오직 진리 안에 거하지 못했던 우리의 삶을 돌이키게 하시고 하나님의 은혜만을 바라는 우리의 심령되게 인도하여 주사 하나님 아버지 성령을 의지하며 나가는 이 시간되게 도와주시고 하나님의 말씀을 정말 우리 영혼에 담고 주의 뜻대로 살수 있는 온전한 심령과 마음을 주 앞에 간구해 나갈 수 있도록 우리의 영혼을 붙들어주시고 함께하여 주시옵소서 허물 많은 자를 용서하여 주시고 오직 주의 보혈의 공로를 의지하는 이 심령 가운데 함께하여 주시고 성령으로 붙들어주시옵소서 우리의 영혼을 받아주시고 함께하여 주시기를 간절히 구하고 나오며 예수의 이름으로 기도드리옵나이다 아멘 God, who is creator of everything, who gives and takes everything away, we believe in you and trust in you. We pray that for this past week, you have protected all the Sangha people and we thank you. We pray that as you have loved us this way, we pray that on this holy and blessed day of the Lord, we pray that all Sangha people, on this Lord's day, that you would lead all the families of Sangwak Church. We pray that you would accept us in this worship. We pray that according to your great mercy, we pray that in this service we may worship you in spirit and in truth. We pray that according to your spiritual grace, we pray that the faith of the saints may be blessed. We pray this worship may be filled with the Holy Spirit so that we can seek you according to your will. Holy God, our Father, we pray that as in our lives we believe in you and seek to glorify you in our lives, we were weak in our flesh and we could not glorify you. 
We pray for your forgiveness and mercy. We pray that in this worship, we may return to you and confess to you that in our lives, we may further glorify you and that you would change us. Holy God, our Father, we pray that in all the areas of our lives, whether in our workplace or in our, in our households, we pray that we may confess to you the weakness of our faith. We pray that you would answer all our prayers and in our lives, we pray that we may confess that you are living and we pray we may experience you. We pray that you would change us. And as we seek to succeed in this worship, we pray we may see your face in this worship. Holy God, our Father, we pray for the health of our senior overseer and we pray that until, until your will decrees it, we pray that it may be fulfilled until the end. We pray that you would take a hold of the senior overseer and the overseer. We pray that you would lead them. We pray that you would give them the wisdom, knowledge and power for ministry. We pray that you'd take a hold of them. We pray for the acting overseer. As you have appointed on the pulpit to preach your word, we pray you give him strength and health. We pray that as you lead him, we may hear your holy word and you would work on us. We pray we may be good fields to receive your word. We pray with an earnest and sincere faith. We may receive your word and that you would work in us. We pray that as your word is living and active, which divides into the penetrating soul and spirit, joints and sinews, we pray we may hear it not as the word of man, but as the word of the living God. How do you God our Father? We pray that as we have died with Jesus, we pray we may live with we live with Jesus with a great and courageous faith. We pray we may have great victory in our lives of faith. We pray we may discern all spirits. We pray that we may stay awake in the word of God. And we pray that all Sangwak families may be blessed. We pray that you'd walk in us by the fullness of the Holy Spirit. We pray this worship can be blessed. We pray for the fullness of blessings in this worship as we thank you and glorify you in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray, Amen. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his namesake. Even though I walk to the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your word and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Oh, 
Holy God, our Father, as we come before you to give our offerings by faith, we pray that you be with all these families by your blessings. We pray for these families who have given their offerings of holy construction. We pray that you would bless their health and all that they have. We pray for all these families who have given their offerings for the sake of the church and by faith. We pray that as they have given their tithe offerings, we pray that they may receive your great blessings in their spirits. We pray that they may witness your miraculous signs. We pray for those families who have also given for the livelihood of the church. We pray that all these saints and families who have given these offerings may be answered in their prayers and that they may see your great signs and wonders by your blessing. We pray for the families that have given their thanksgiving offerings and all other offerings that they have given. We pray that you remember them and that they may receive your great grace and blessings. We pray for all those who have given their offerings that they, that you will be with them and that as they have given them by faith, we pray that they may see the great signs that you are with them and that you work in them. We pray that you would guide them. We pray all these in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. May all those who have given their holy offerings to the Lord, may they be filled with the blessings and grace in the name of Jesus forever. Amen.
The word of God is found in 3 John chapter 1 verse 2 to 4. 3 John chapter 1 verse 2 to 4. Dear friend, I pray that you may enjoy good health and that all may go well with you, even as your soul is getting along well. It gave me great joy to have some brothers come and tell about your faithfulness to the truth and how you continue to walk in the truth. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children are walking in the truth. Amen. So that we can hear the precious word of life, let us pray for the overseer. Let us pray that as he preaches the word, he may preach it in great wisdom and understanding, and that we may lack nothing to receive it. Now let us pray. Amen. Holy God our Father, we pray that on this precious day of the Lord, we pray that you would help your servant whom you have appointed to preach your word. We pray to us who hear your word, we pray that you'd help us by the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray, Amen. Just as your spirit prospers. Let us read the sermon outline. God is the origin of all blessings. He created mankind. Though they were born on earth, God wants to take them to heaven to gain eternal life. This is God's will, which was fulfilled in heaven. He gave sun and rain to creation to give life to the ecosystem. Yet God first wants us to prosper by His blessings. This is by our relationship with God. He wants us to prosper on earth. He also wants the sick to be healed and healthy. But since the aim is to enter eternal life, it is the Spirit which prospers. To make the Spirit prosper, God gave His grace. Knowing and believing in God's name, drinking God's blood and gaining life, and receiving God's command fulfills eternal life. He fulfilled this work on earth by the Holy Spirit. Obey God and be wealthy. Come before God with your wealth. God wants all things to go well with us. Be healed of your sickness. The Lord Jesus was not flogged without reason. By his wounds we are healed. Yet our spirits must prosper. Jesus suffered for our spirits. He made us born again so our spirits can prosper by the Holy Spirit. We must become people of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God wants us to prosper. More than anything else, God wants our spirits to prosper. Because this is so, furthermore, all that we do, He wants all that we do to prosper. He wants our wealth to prosper. This is what He wants. And this God dwells near us and He desires to give all these along with us. If we look at the Bible passage here, 
we understand that Gaius' spirit prospered and he was blessed. There was a person called Gaius. And this saint, this saint dwelled in the truth and did it, and John was so joyful. And he saw that his spirit was prospering, and so he was blessed. And he prayed that he would prosper in everything else. This was a prayer of blessing. Just as his, as his spirit prospered, though it was not a spiritual thing, everything else went well, everything else prospered. Because the spirit prospered, his health also prospered. And it showed clearly that this could be gained. And this was acceptable. And this is what John prayed for. In this Bible passage, we have just read, there were many precious words elsewhere. But this is a very, a very precious and grateful word of God. But this word of God is not impossible or unattainable at all. As, as we can see in this Bible passage, we can see we can see what it details about John's work, about his ministry. And he mentions that there were other teachers, there were other teachers sent out by him to go and teach. And some among them, and those, one of those who received these teachers was Gaius. And Gaius accepted these teachers and served these teachers with his material wealth and gave his offerings to them. So those teachers sent by John, they returned back to John and they reported what, what they had seen. And they had commended Gaius. And so John was so joyful and he wrote his letter in gratitude. And what, and what John wrote was that Gaius was acting in the truth. He was acting in the truth. And it says in the Bible that John was, that he said that Gaius was walking in the truth. We can say that it is uh, doing in the truth, but the Bible passage precisely says walking in the truth. And so the Bible talks about preaching the truth. But as Gaius was seen as helping the truth, as Gaius was seen as helping the church, he could be seen as helping the truth. And so John was joyful and he wrote his letter. And he said, it gives me no greater joy than to see my children walking in the truth. And I can see, therefore, that your spirit is prospering. This is what John says with confidence. Just as we can see that Gaius was prospering in his spirit and he prospered with everything else. But there is a great contrast with somebody called Diotrephes. There's a great contrast with Diotrephes. So, John was asking by letter that the churches would accept his teachers, and Gaius did so. He accepted these teachers and served them. On the other hand, Diotrephes reacted in the opposite way. He did not 
He did not accept the instructions of cooperation and he wanted to be first. This is his personality. He wanted to be first and he rejected these teachers and workers. He treated them badly. He wanted to be first. He may have been a very difficult person. And so he asked by letter from John that they would cooperate with his teachers, but Diotrephes sent them away from the church. So they who ought to have helped the church by accepting these teachers, Diotrephes actually sent these teachers away because he, he was very unwilling to help by material means and he was very unwilling to help materially. And would he have ever thought that he opposed the truth openly? No, he would have thought and he would have introduced himself by as one who helps the truth and those who, as one who helps the church, helps out the church, very capable, very able. He would have seen himself in this way, as one who helps the truth, but in fact, he was one who harmed the truth and opposed the truth and persecuted it. So as we summarize this, I will speak about a few things. Though they may be saints as the same as everyone else, there are those who do the truth and those who do not do the truth. There is a great difference between the two. Those who act for the truth, those who act for the truth, they are those who are walking in the truth and it can be seen that their spirit is prospering. They are those who act for the truth, who act to help the truth, so they are therefore dwelling in the truth, that is, they are walking in the truth, and so everything is prospering with their spirits. So they are those who act for the truth. However, those who do not act for the truth have nothing to do with the truth and so we cannot be sure about what is the state of their spirits. On the other hand, there are those who can act to help the truth and also the church. They show this by their actions, by showing that they help the truth by their actions and those and there were also those who do not so there were those who are who show that they are used by the truth and those who show that they are not used by the truth there are those who act to help out the truth and those who do not those who act to help out the truth will see that their spirits prosper so, those who show by clear action that they help the truth, it will be shown in their living reality. However, those who do not show that they act out the truth, we cannot be sure about their spiritual state. Oh, even though they say with their mouths that they act for the truth, if they do not show by their actions that they do anything for the truth, we cannot be sure about the state of their spirits. So, the truth and knowledge are not the same thing. So, knowledge and action are not the same thing. And so, we cannot verify whether your spirit prospers just because you have knowledge. Even though you have knowledge, you cannot verify whether your spirit is prospering or not. It cannot be judged. Of course, we need knowledge. We need knowledge to save our spirits. We need knowledge about the truth to save our spirits. So we know how to serve and to obey in accordance with the truth. We know and we will know how to labor and toil for the truth. 
Without the truth, we cannot do anything. However, knowledge of the truth is not the final end. It is only the beginning. Those who have knowledge of the truth are those who stand in the truth. They are those who stand in the truth. So, we, we have the knowledge, but this is not the end, but this is only the qualification that we can stand in the truth. And if we go even further, this is the qualification that we can do the truth. So, if we have knowledge of the truth, it does not show that we are laboring for anything. It does not show that we are not helping the Lord in any way. In this state, we cannot verify that we are walking in the truth and we cannot verify that we will prosper. However, from the knowledge, if we, if we act it out, if we act the truth out, then we, it shows that we are prospering in our spirits. So I have just explained this with a few words. So again, we can say that there are those who have knowledge and this leads to those who stand in the truth and this leads to those who do the truth. It is found right here. We can look. It says, if there are those who have knowledge, then they can stand in the truth and then they can do the truth. So having, the, having knowledge of the truth is not the end. Is not the end means there must be development. By the knowledge of the truth, we must change to those who stand in the truth. So if we have come here, we are similar to true Christians, to those who stand in the truth. This is very upright. But we cannot stand, we cannot remain just here, but now we must change to those who do the truth. This is what we must want to. So to explain this again, we have knowledge, we have the same knowledge, but there are those there is that knowledge which only remains in the head, in the mind, but there are also those who have the truth enter their, ex enter their spirits by experience. There are those who experience the truth in their spirits. When they gain the truth, when they gain the truth, it is as if that God's person, God's personality comes into their spirits, comes into their spirits with great passion. So the thoughts and mind of the heart, of the fleshly heart disappear and they accept the person of God. And it opens up like a great panorama. And they, and it shows that God's Lordship dwells in them and covers them and it, it has a firm place in their spirits. And this is beyond having the knowledge of the truth in knowledge and mind alone and you experience the truth in their spirits. So there is another thing I want to explain. From now on, we, we desire to do by our actions what the Lord wills. We want to do the Lord's will by open action so we can show that we take root in the truth and we experience the truth in our spirits so that from now on we fulfill the earnest desire of the Lord by following Him in our actions. This is the acknowledgement of the truth beyond knowledge. And so they, it shows that they are standing in the truth. 
So the truth is not to be understood, is not merely to be understood. Of course, it does begin by knowledge of the truth. We must hear it with our ears. But more so, we have to experience the truth. And the result of this, result of those who experience and to act the truth, they will change in, in their understanding, in the structure of the thinking and many things else. Even though we have not understood everything, even though we have only a little bit of this understanding, whoever, whoever has even a small portion of an understanding of the truth of Christ, it shows that they belong to Christ and it helps their spirits because they show that they stand in the truth, because they show that they can do something, even though they have an initial small portion of knowledge. So the truth, the truth, what is the truth? The truth is that which shows that Christ sacrificed himself for us. It shows the sincerity of Christ by his grace, the grace of saving us by his, exp by his atonement, by his sacrifice. It is also about God's love for us, his eternal love for us, his true love for us. And it is also about also about us willingly opening the door for us to come with to enter God and to dwell with God. So God has shown us his honest deeds. So those who stand in the truth, those who stand in the truth are those who confess that they understand what Christ has done for them according to the truth and they are amazed and they return to the Lord and they abandon their past ways and they enter into God. And they, and they enter into God and know the Lord's heart and the Lord's heart enters into them. So if we stand in the truth, we are not understanding mere principles, but we enter into spiritual reality. We must return to the Lord and change our past ways and enter into this spiritual reality. We are talking about this spiritual reality. So we can understand that God is true and sincere. We experience this. We are inspired. This is not forceful, but this is inspirational. So we cannot quite explain this, for this concerns our spirits. Even though you explain this a hundred times, you explain it in a hundred different ways. So God's glory is shined towards our spirits. Do you understand this? Have you ever realized this? Have you ever discerned this? So when God said, let there be light, when God explained, let there be light, so how does God shine his light? How does God shine his glory? It is given to those who know his glory. Those who know his glory, so the glory of God dwells only with the face of Jesus Christ. So how can we ever hope to contain this? How can we ever hope to possess this? Now it's found in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 6. For it is the God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. This is given by great, greatly inspired and fearful, and fearful hearts. It is a very poetic expression. It is something that cannot be understood in the material world, that cannot ever be met in the material world. 
And so we look into a mirror. We must in we must look into this mirror and see the glory of the Lord. We should see ourselves, but we actually see the glory of the Lord, and we see that we are transformed into His image. We are being transformed into His image from glory to glory. How can we ever explain this? Can you even understand this? Can you ever have a conversation about this with the worldly people? It is found in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 13 to 18. Now the Lord is a spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we all, with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. How can we ever explain this? It is expressed from glory to glory. It is found from glory to glory. This cannot be written or expressed with worldly language. Can we even understand this by symbolic language? So we are talking about the fullness of that understanding when we behold the transformation of this same image from glory to glory. We are talking about beyond mere rational understanding, to dwell in the fullness of the Lord. We want to dwell in the fullness of the Lord. This is what we want. How can we ever understand this so that worldly people understand this? How can we understand this experience? It is only by faith. So, it is found in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 17 to 19, that Christ may dwell in our hearts, through faith that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and length and depth and height, to know the love of Christ which passes, under, passes knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. This, to the point that we are breathless, is a great and abundant inspiration. So whether people make fun of this, whether they do not understand this or not, this is the fullness of understanding, which is beyond rational understanding. It is, a, it is an abundance. It is the love of Christ. It is the fullness of God. It is the fullness of God. It is the fullness of God that comes inside us. How can we ever explain this? So to us who believe in Jesus, we have had this experience at some time. Even though it may not be now, even it may not be tomorrow, or a few days later, it has surely come upon us. It is this experience that we have had. Although in the past we lived according to the ways of this world and we lived by its rules and pattern, we lived by politics, we lived by our own planning for survival. But we have come to experience all these. We only looked to the Lord from afar. And we may have accepted that the Lord's way was right, but we only looked at it from afar. But when we took a step closer, when we took a step closer, we understood with our rational mind that the Lord's way was right and we wanted to reject this and accept that. But now, now we have sincerely accepted Christ. We have sincerely accepted the great joy of the Lord. We have experienced by great joy what the Lord has done, even today. This cannot be given by the world, but only by Jesus Christ. And we have completely accepted Christ as we have been united with Him. We have, expected his, we have accepted His experience. We become a new man. 
And this is a simul simultaneous experience as we desire to be used by Him. So we want to glorify Him. We know it is worthy to glorify Him, to be used by Him. So there is a hymn that we know. So the so what I'm explaining is similar to the contents found in this hymn. It is a hymn of praise. So it, the contents of the lyrics explain that we say that we stand before the Lord. We are standing before the Lord and we want to be used by Him. We want the Lord to dwell with us. And this is our confession. And in this state, in this state, we are standing in the truth. We are standing in the truth. We must stand in the truth so that we can at last do the truth. And then we become people who stand in the truth as true Christians. Yet, if we, if we do not yet stand in the truth and only, and only remain with knowledge, then this is to be greatly disappointing because we only see Christ from afar because our hearts are closed we cannot come close to him and so such spirits cannot fulfill the desire of Christ but are very far away from him they do not dwell with Christ they do not stand in Christ they do not stand in the truth and so they judge their own value by themselves and they pursue their own ways. They do what they desire by their own understanding and they, and they go about their business by their own way and desire. And they are beyond God's intervention, God's possibility for intervention and love. So we can liken it to this. It is like a son. It is like it is like a son who knocks on the door after going out a long time. So there are many times that we cannot always be very joyful when we meet our family members. In the same way, the Lord, the Lord, we are knocking on the Lord's door, but we cannot expect that the Lord will be joyful at all times. So, in the lyrics of this hymn, it explaining that the Lord is standing outside the door and that he is waiting for us, for us to come in. So we believe in the Lord and we call on his name as we, we call out to him outside of the house. We must be careful of this. Such people are not standing in the truth, but they are standing outside the truth. They are very weak in their desire to do something for the truth. Why must we obey the truth? So, we are those who act in the truth. Whoever stands in the truth will also naturally act out the truth. It says in James, it says in James chapter 1 verse 22, Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. So such people who do not do the truth do not stand in it but stand outside of it. 
whoever stands in the truth, whoever stands in the truth, whoever it is, they are those who are walking in the truth, who are acting it out. They are those who are acting it out. So God desires that we act out the truth, that through through Sangwak Church, we may fulfill the Lord's success, the Lord's successful business. So we make the resolution for Sangwak Church's success, for the success of Jesus Christ in this church. If we can only be used by the Lord this way, we will, we will fulfill His great pleasure. We are those who, who seek our, our prosperity and our spirits by doing the Lord's work. So we exist so that we can do the Lord Jesus' work, so that we can be used by Him. This is the reason we exist in our spirits. So that we will never be useless to the Lord, but that we can serve Him, that we can accept His glory. We are like a time bomb. While we are in the flesh, we are like a time bomb. And when the time is up, the bomb will explode. So, during this time before the bomb explodes, we must be useful to the Lord. So that, although we may find some joys in the flesh, but when the flesh ends, when the time ends, we must be those who are useful to the Lord. So while we are here, while we are here on this earth, we must be useful to the Lord. We must be of useful to Him as we remain in this church and want to be used by Him. We should ask that the Lord will use us. We are not those who remain in the knowledge of the truth, but those who stand in the truth and do the truth. We must not remain in mere knowledge of the truth, but we must stand in it and then we must develop this by doing the truth. We must act out the truth. We must walk in the truth. We cannot, if not, we cannot do anything. It says in First Corinthians, Second Corinthians, chapter thirteen, verse eight: "For we can do nothing against the truth, but for the truth." So, if there are those zealous Christians who serve God zealously and diligently, there are those who do not. For example, there may be husbands and wives who are nagged by their partners to come to church on the Lord's Day. They are dragged into the church by their spouses. And when they hear God's word, and they hear this sermon and they say, Ooh, this is very difficult. It, is, it, feels, it feels very distant from me. I do not know if I can do this. Although I can attend the service, it, it seems very difficult for me. So, uh, yet I encourage those people, not for them to close their hearts, to be a uh, heart of heart, for I am also thinking of you. I feel for you. I feel that God has led all of, the, all of these to the church as well. So, even though they may be lacking in faith, I wish that they could hear this so they can also can say, Lord, although I cannot do much, I am on your side and I respect you and I fear you. I fear you and I pray that in Sangwak Church that the work of the Lord Jesus Christ will sincerely succeed. And I not only wish for the, for the success of your work, 
but I wish that I may someday do it. I wish that I may someday be able to fulfill it. Although my faith is weak, I pray that I may be useful to you someday. I pray that you would forgive me for my weak faith so we can confess to the Lord in this way. Anybody can confess to the Lord in this way. So whoever it is in the church, we can be useful to the Lord and we can be of benefit to Him. We can all do this. So, God wants to give authority that is His rights to those who act in the truth. We all want to act in the truth. So, there is no clear laid out principle. And that is in the world, there is there are these uh, broad principles in nature in this world, and it is also found in society. So we have to act very harshly and crude to survive in this environment. And this environment in this society is where the devil works. And although there are individual there are individual uh, desires. We all have all different individual desires. Yet we all work to just barely survive in this world. And even in this world, there are those who go well and those who do not go well. So does this belong to them? No, for none of it belongs to them because it, all, it will all disappear. They have no rights. However, those who act in the truth, whoever acts in the truth, whoever asks the Lord to give him those rights to possess, God will give those authority. God will give this right to whoever acts in the truth. So that they can be acceptable to the Lord and then God will give them authority and His rights. We are talking about this authority. We are talking about these rights. And this is what we want. So we try to assess things in the world but we cannot however we understand we understand that god gives his rights to us his authority to us so we have accepted god's authority god's rights and we are strengthened and encouraged we are talking about god's authority god's rights we are those who have these And whoever does these, whoever acts them out, whoever acts out the truth will be blessed. It is found in James chapter 1 verse 25. But the man who looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues to do this, not forgetting what he has heard but doing it, he will be blessed in what he does. Again, but the man who looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues to do this, not forgetting what he has heard but doing it, he will be blessed in what he does. Whoever does God's work will be blessed. It is found elsewhere in the Bible. So whoever does this, whoever does God's word will be blessed. We must do this. So even though we do not experience our health improving or other things improving right now, we might feel disappointed, but the question is, do we have God's authority in us? Do we have God's rights in us? We must seek these. We must seek to possess these. And God's right will dwell in us and God, along with these, will also give us health. He will give us health. 
so we must seek God to give us health. And so we will, we will often ask the Lord to help us, but we feel, we feel that we are very empty. We are feel we are very lacking, and we wonder, we wonder whether we have no power of the Lord. Yet let us do all that which makes God see that He remembers us and He keeps us. So the Lord will see this person is acting in accordance with the truth. This person is acting in accordance with the truth. And we will be accepted by the Lord. So I exhort to you in the name of Jesus Christ that you will be accepted by God by doing the truth. So we can also say that it is better to suffer pain for at least they have God's authority because they will be accepted by the Lord because no one can overcome God's authority. So health is permitted to those who have God's authority. Even though they might suffer pain, they do not. So I exhort you in the name of Jesus Christ to be accepted by the Lord in this way. Hallelujah. So we are talking about letting we are talking about protecting the truth those who do not stand in the truth cannot protect the truth we must continue to do the truth to act it out so when we receive god's word we are not those we are not those who accept the truth in our minds but we must accept this in our spirits so that our spirits will come close to the Lord, so that the Lord will inspire us, so that the Lord will change us, so that the Lord will lead us to abandon the things of the past, so that we can have this spiritual experience by which the Lord leads us. So the Lord's life becomes our basis and we will have this determination for the sake of laboring for the truth. So we will labor for the truth and we will be productive for the truth. So, I, so we must step in to standing in the truth by acting out the truth. So, I, yet I warn you that we will not act for ourselves. We will not act for ourselves. This is not acceptable. We must work for the truth. We must labor for the eternal God. So this is what I accept to, ex exhort to you in the name of Jesus Christ, so that you can keep in step with the truth, to all the saints, I exhort this in the name of Jesus Christ. So until we walk on that path, until we get to our destination, we must never oppose or work against the truth, but we must serve by the Holy Spirit so that we can serve and do things for the truth. And even though we may feel that we are not prospering in our health, yet we know, we know and we experience God's rights. We experience God's authority. So we can experience the sincere God, the truthful God. So this is what I ex exhort to all Sangwak people in the name of Jesus Christ. So we are those who act out the truth, that we will never abandon the truth, and the Lord will help us always. I exhort to you in the name of Jesus Christ that you will act out the truth. Hallelujah. Now let us stand up. Let us all pray together. Let us pray that the Lord will help us.
Let us pray that we do not remain by the mere knowledge of the truth, but that we will experience protecting the truth so that we will abandon the ways of this world so that we will return 180 degrees to the Lord so that we will experience that the Lord dwells with us and that we will protect the truth. Let us now make this determination and now let us pray. Let us pray that we act out the truth. Although we feel we have no authority in this world, we know that the Lord helps us. Let us pray that God will help us. Let us pray that God will make us prosper in every way. Let us pray that the Lord will dwell with us. Now let us pray together. Holy God our Father, we pray that as we have heard your word, we pray you would help all your saints. We pray we may stand firm in the truth and that we can experience your wonderful glory as a new creation. We pray that we may have the resolve to act out your truth. We pray we may walk in your truth. We pray that you'd help all of us in the, the resolve. We pray that as we do this, we may prosper in everything else and that we may enjoy good health. We pray that this may come to us by the great authority and rights of God. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray, Amen. Now, during this time, I want to sing a hymn with you. This is our purest confession, not just that we want to be used by Him, but we have met with Him, and we naturally give this confession. Let us now sing together this united confession. Lord, I am here. Chunim nega yogi isawoni Narpo ne so so Nayemam, Nayemam, Chukedirioni Chupadu. So, 주님 내가 여기 사오니 나를 써 주소서 가진 건 모두 다 주께 드리오니 주 받으소서.
나를 보내소서 나의 맘 나의 몸 죽게 드리오니 주받으옵소서 Hallelujah. Now let us sing the hymn together. Ne yonghon e happy pichi ni chu yonghwang chal la ne i se sang ho ton bi po da i bi to bi na ne. 주의 영광 빛난 그빛 내게 비춰 주시옵소서 그 밝은 얼굴 빼올 때 나의 영혼 기쁘다 내 영혼의 노래 있으니 주 정강입니다 주 귀를 기울이시사 주함께하실때 그 평화 내게 깃들고 주의 꽃 피네 주의 영광 빛난 그빛 내게 비춰 주시옵소서 그 밝은 얼굴 배울 때 나의 영혼 기쁘다 내 영혼의 희락이 있고 큰 소망 넘치네 주 예수 복을 주시고 또 내려주시네 주의 영광 빛난 그빛 내게 비춰 주시옵소서 그 밝은 얼굴 배울 때 
나의 영혼 기쁘다 할렐루야 할렐루야 이제는 May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ the great love of God the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be given for all Baryans and Sangwak people in their families forever in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now let us sing the Berian hymn, verse 1 and 3. To God who has accepted our worship, let us glorify Him and clap our hands. So I exhort all our people to be encouraged. And let us not forget to give our earnest offerings to the Lord. And that and if there are those who cannot give their account transfer they should uh, save it up so that we can give it when we at last meet. So I exhort you that we can all continue in this way. So let us all have victory and labor for the truth. Thank you very much. Yes, we 